What's up, everybody? Before we get into today's retrospective, I just want to point out that a new ban list was revealed February 6th, 2023. So there are some things in this recording that may sound strange because we're no longer in a tier zero tier element format. Um, and now with the new ban list, having brought back Spiral Resort, the three, I mentioned how Spiral Resort is at one, um, but obviously it's at three. So all this was recorded before we got the ban list. So just keep that in mind as you watch this video. Without any further ado, let's dive on into it. If you keep up with competitive Yu-Gi-Oh, you will know that we are currently in a tier zero format with tier element being the best deck. So I thought it would be fun to discuss a deck that started off as an interesting rogue strategy, but ended up becoming a tier zero deck thanks to the release of just one card that finally set them over the top. Today, we look back on Spirals, a theme that centers around monsters that are spies like a James Bond, and they are not to be mistaken with Spirals with an I. That is a crappy archetype focused around equip cards. Yeah, Konami's naming has never been the greatest. With all that being said, my name is Avery, and this is a 2017 Spiral Tier Zero Format Retrospective. Spiral is a spy-inspired archetype that includes two supporting sub-archetypes, Spiral Gear and Spiral Mission. Many Spiral cards involve correctly declaring the card type, monster, spell, or trap of the top card of your opponent's deck. In addition, many Spiral cards lack hard once-per-turn clauses and can be used several times in a single turn. Due to the lack of summoning restrictions, Spiral can take advantage of most generic monsters, particularly Link monsters. Because of all these factors, Spiral became an explosive combo deck that could build various end boards with multiple disruptions. The deck itself revolves around its main monster, that being Spiral Super Agent. This card is an extender that can also help break your opponent's board. Many Spiral cards, i.e. Spiral Quick Fix, require that you control Spiral Super Agent on the field. The first effect allows you to special summon this card from your hand if you correctly declare the card type of the top card of your opponent's deck. The second effect allows you to pop one spell or trap your opponent controls if it's special summoned by the effect of a Spiral card, meaning itself, or Spiral Mission Rescue. Both effects are hard once per turn, however. There are also other monsters in the deck that when they're on the field, their name is treated as Super Agent, so keep that in mind. Next up is the card that made this deck Tier 0 in the Link Monster Spiral Double Helix. This card is an extender that can be linked summoned using any two Spiral monsters. Like Spiral Tough, this card is treated as Super Agent while on the field or in the grave. In addition, it can special summon a Spiral monster from your deck or graveyard if you correctly declare the card type of the top card of your opponent's deck. This effect is a hard once per turn, but that doesn't really matter when you realize what the end board is. Spiral is a deck that came out in the Dark Illusion in August of 2016. However, the deck was only able to rock it into the spotlight with the release of Spiral Double Helix, and the deck relied on its ability to generate huge amounts of card advantage, which allowed them to get a board consisting usually of four or more disruptive plays, with protection in the form of Ib the World Chalice Priestess, Spiral Resort, and Spiral Gear Last Resort. Although it was thought that the deck might not be as dominant in the TCG as it was in the OCG, Spiral had proven this fundamentally wrong at YCS Dallas on October 21st to 22nd, 2017, wherein the deck took 29 of the 32 top spots despite being being new in the meta. This gave it a solid position as the sole member of Tier 0. So let's look at two of the topping lists from this event. The first of these will be Marcelo Barbary's top 32 spiral list that focused more on going second in the first game of a match. The other list will be Gabriel Marini's that went undefeated in Swiss and landed him in the top four. Although we saw a lot of small variants of the spiral list at Dallas, Barbary's build definitely sets itself apart in a few key ways. First of all, he clearly built the deck with the intent to go second. He accomplished this by main decking 13 different hand traps. To make room for this extremely large number of hand traps, Barbary chose to drop several additional combo pieces and extenders that other builds ran. This included the omission of set rotation, double summon, and most importantly, spiral gear utility wire. While utility wire is often one of the major disruption cards in a turn one spiral board, it does nothing to help going second. The likely logic that went into this choice was that Spiral was already powerful enough going first without utility wire 
there that it wasn't worth running for the potential disadvantage it can cause him going second. His list is also 45 cards, which, although seemingly less consistent, seems to have largely worked out for Barbary as the deck had so many different play starters in it. Barbary's other notable tech choice was the inclusion of three Blackwing Gofu the Big Shadow. Although Gofu had seen use in the pre-Double Helix iterations of the deck that focused on getting out Spiral Sleeper as quickly as possible, this was mostly dropped in favor of the more combo-oriented builds from the OCG. However, it makes sense for Barbary's deck as his focus was on going second, making Spiral Sleeper essential to breaking his opponent's Spiral Board. As for his side deck, he primarily focused on a variety of traps that would benefit him when going first in later games, including Solemn Strike and Scolding. Evenly Match also makes an appearance in his side deck, a seemingly popular choice at the event. Evenly Match has the benefit of allowing any player to out their opponent's board when going second. However, the main drawback to this strategy is that a well-placed set rotation can lock the opponent out of the ability to play Evenly Match directly from their hand, as they would control a card on their field. Because of this drawback, some players opted not to run Evenly altogether. Now, Moreni's deck is relatively standard for what we saw making the top cut at the event. The main ratio difference in Moreni's list from many others was the inclusion of only two Spiral Super Agent. The reasoning given for this is that the summoning effect of Super Agent is a hard once per turn, meaning it can only be done once regardless of how many different copies of the card you draw. This can easily make extra Super Agents dead in hand, taking away a key slot in the hand that could be taken up by a powerful combo piece instead. Moreni also elected to run Gofu, much like Barbary. The main reason behind this is the versatility that the card offered allowing both synchro and link plays. Gofu is a one card way to make Ningirisu one of the easiest outs to the set rotation lock, which could prove deadly for the deck. Marini also chose to run Herald of the Arclight as an additional synchro monster to be summoned using Destrudo that has been lowered to level 3, along with a Spiral Gear Drone or Quick Fix. The reasoning behind this was that Herald of the Arclight is one of the few cards that can offer protection against an opponent's evenly match when going first in games 2 and 3 of a match. The final point of interest in Marini's list is his side deck. Although he ran some of the standard choices, such as Evenly Match for going second and Scolding for going first, he interestingly ran Secret Village of the Spellcasters. The philosophy behind this was to use the field spell to lock the opponent out while controlling either Spiral Master Plan or Ib World Chalice Priestess. While this tech choice did not see widespread adoption, it was definitely something interesting to consider. As Spiral had just proven itself to be an insane deck and becoming tier 0 overnight, tech cards being used at that point were relatively narrow. In spite of this, there was a few common options. The first of these was Lear Lucic Recital Starling and DD Crow. The advantages of Recital Starling is that it gives an extra disruption when going first. DD Crow can be very useful as it can potentially stop Quick Fix from summoning itself from the grave, as well as banish Distrudo before it can be summoned. The downside is that Recital Starling is relatively useless when going second, especially when compared to Ghost Trick Delahan, which is usually ran in its place. DD Crow also can end up not being useful at preventing the opponent from summoning back Quick Fix if they discard Mission Rescue for Quick Fix costs, as that card's graveyard effect can be chained to DD Crow. While there were a handful of top lists at Dallas that elected not to play this combo. Builds that did play Destrudo were able to be insulated from cards like DD Crow. The next popular tech option was the inclusion of both Gofu and Coral Dragon. This never saw widespread play in OCG, but this can largely be attributed to Gofu being limited on the OCG Forbidden list. The advantage of Gofu is that it can help extend a hand into Spiral Sleeper and or Double Helix without needing Machine Duplication or Double Summon. The main disadvantage is that Gofu is largely a dead card when drawn past turn 1, meaning that he can serve as a potential hit to consistency. Another tech choice run by a small number of topping Spiral players was the inclusion of Spiral Gear Fully Armed. This card was very popular in Spiral builds prior to the release of Double Helix, but was dropped in favor of more consistent choices. However, it would from time to time show its face in the meta. This is due to its ability to more safely out an opponent's copy of Spiral Sleeper equipped with Spiral Gear Last Resort. Getting past Sleeper protected by both Last Resort and Spiral Resort can prove to be a tough challenge, and Fully Armed's non-targeting banishing can bypass all of Sleeper's protection. This card became useful as both a main or side deck at a single copy due to its high searchability as a spiral gear. The final tech choice that we saw succeed at Dallas was the inclusion of a second Spiral Gear Last Resort. This was run by some players in order to more easily enable rank 4 plays in the deck. Having multiple copies of Last Resort gave the option to still have a Last Resort in hand or deck for use with Sleeper, while being able to more easily get out a Beast Dweller, Tornado Dragon, or Baguska. As Spiral had rapidly proven itself as more or less the only standout contender of the format, the matchup I want to focus on primarily is the Mirror Match. However, I will also briefly go over options of what can be considered to be the more difficult or more common, at a local level, lower tier matchups 
cards for the deck. The main way to beat the Spiral Mirror Match was through hand traps. While there were a variety of hand traps that could be effectively used against Spiral, there are a few that should be looked at before others. Besides the obvious choices of Ash Blossom and Max C, Joel and Lockbird is the next most potent option against Spiral. As the deck heavily relies on repeated searches, Droll will effectively shut an opponent's ability to accrue advantage down. Other strong hand traps include Ghost Ogre and Ciphering Your Gamma. Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit, although nowhere near as potent it was during Zoo format, can still potentially drop a Spiral player if timed well. There are three main points in the early Spiral combo where Ghost Ogre could be effective. On the activation of Spiral Gear Drones effect, on the activation of Spiral Resorts effect, and on the activation of Double Helix's effect. Using Ghost Ogre on Drone can, if the opponent lacks the proper follow-up cards in their hand, prevent them from summoning Double Helix. This is, unfortunately, a risky gamble as there are a variety of cards that most Spiral builds ran that could get past this, including Gear Big Red, Soul Charge, One for One, and Double Summon. Now, if used on Resort, this can potentially stop the opponent from ever getting their combo pieces in the first place. Now, this is even riskier than using Ghost Ogre on Drone, however, as the disadvantage can be ignored if that player already had a way to get Double Helix in their hand, or if they had another way to get out Spiral Resort. This is relatively likely, considering that many builds ran 3 Resort, 3 Terraforming, and 3 Set Rotation. Jesus, just the thought of that makes me cringe. The main reason to use Ghost Ogre on Resort is if the opponent used Set Rotation to play it. This is because, unless they were able to successfully resolve Spiral Super Agent to destroy the the field spell they set to your field, they'll be unable to activate any further field spells. The final time that it's effective to use Ghost Ogre is against Spiral Double Helix. While this won't prevent the opponent from getting the monster from Double Helix's effect, because Double Helix will no longer be on the field, they will not be able to summon a monster, but will be forced to add it to hand instead. This means they will likely be unable to effectively gain card advantage off of Master Plan. The main way around this was for the opponent to either search an alternate combo piece that they can use to continue into a different board, or just search Master Plan anyways. If they search master plan regardless, they likely have a way to both get it into the grave from hand and subsequently revive it with Spiral Gear Big Red or Spiral Mission Rescue. Take a shot every time I say Spiral. <laughs> Despite these drawbacks, Double Helix is generally the best card to hit with Ghost Ogre. Even a day in 2023, after hits on the ban list, Double Helix is still the best card to hit, especially if you've been tracking what resources your opponent has already burned through. If they've already used their various once per turn effects such as Super Agent and Gear Big Red, then hitting Double Helix will be likely to stop the opponent entirely or force them to end on just Sleeper. The last significant hand trap of note is Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries. Although initially lauded as a key hand trap in the matchup, it had later been omitted from most top lists. This is largely due to the fact that Ghost Reaper doesn't actually cause any explicit loss in card advantage, which can be deadly in such an advantage-dependent mirror match. That's not to say that Ghost Reaper doesn't carry the potential to decisively turn the advantage against an opponent who has a less than optimal hand that would need to rely on double helix to make or break a board. The last major card that was used against Spiral was of course evenly match. This card was very popular in side decks at YCS Dallas due to its versatility and ability to out a full spiral board without targeting. The card does come with major downsides, however. These are primarily that the card would be useless against set rotation as the field spell that you're stuck with prevents evenly from being activated in the hand. The card also saw much less use after the release of Trigate Wizard as it could negate evenly match relatively easily. Another viable side deck engine encountered to evenly match was the Artifact Engine. This consists of three Artifact Sanctum, one Scythe, and one Lancia. This engine is extremely extremely versatile when going first as Scythe can effectively shut the opponent out from making a board. In addition, Artifact Lancia can also be summoned and subsequently attributed to stop the possibility of evenly match if the opponent is telegraphing such a play. Although decidedly less popular in the top cut of events post-Dallas, Pendulum Magicians were able to maintain a presence at smaller regionals and at local tournaments. Fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how you look at it, Spiral had a relatively easy matchup versus Magicians if played right. Some important things to note against Pendulum Magicians are that DD Crow is essentially useless due to the deck relative neglection of the graveyard as a resource, meaning that it was usually better to prioritize Sylvan Princess Sprite when making a rank 1. The deck can also potentially disrupt your plays using Time Pendulum Graph if you're going second against them. To get around this, it was important to try and either bait out the use of Pendulum Graph or destroy it somehow. One of the easiest ways to do this was with, of course, Super Agent, although randomly guessing for his effect is generally ill-advised. If you need to preserve your drone for further plays, Magicians is the best matchup to guess against. Due to the nature of Pendulums, a Magician player's deck will almost always be made up of a large number of monsters. Because of this, monsters was usually a safe guess and could pay off greatly if it worked. As far as side decking goes, while anti-spell fragrance was a powerful option, it was largely unnecessary and not really worth the side deck space. One of the more important calls was to keep set rotation in deck in order to prevent the opponent from utilizing evenly match as it was often used against Spiral. While this applies to every matchup given how generic evenly matched is, Pendulum Magicians in particular wouldn't otherwise be effective
protected by the set rotation lock as they don't rely on a field spell. One of the most anticipated matchups of the format, ABC, had proven to be a relatively easy opponent for Spiral. This was largely due to the overlap and effectiveness of Ghost Reaper between ABC and Spiral. If going to any event that you suspect to have a large ABC presence, it was very important that you run an ABC Dragon Buster in either the extra deck or side deck as a Ghost Reaper target. Otherwise, the standard disruptive cards like DD Crow and Normal Hand Traps could very easily shut ABC down. Trickstar was also notable for being one of the top represented non-spiral decks at YCS Dallas. This can largely be attributed to the huge number of hand traps that the deck can run, as well as the ease with which they can utilize both Evenly Match and Ghost Reaper. Generally, the more successful builds at Trickstar seem to lean towards either being entirely focused on controlling the game with hand traps or using kaijus to out the spiral board. Because Trickstar used so many generic staple cards, specific side deck cards weren't really needed for the deck. A hand trap that can potentially counter Trickstar was Cyframe Gear Gamma due to its ability to stop a hand trap used against an open board. This can be particularly useful at stopping Droll and Lockbird, which can very easily lead to an FTK. The final matchup of note, which is arguably the easiest matchup for Spiral due to the focus on targeting disruption, True Draco is largely impotent against Spiral and had a hard time breaking Spiral boards so long as Spiral Resort was on the field. One obvious thing to watch out for, however, was Masterpiece. Masterpiece could easily pose a problem mainly due to his high attack and immunity to monster effects, which serve as Spiral's main form of removal. The main way around Masterpiece was either through Kaijus, boosting the attack of a monster with Gear Drone, or by using Spiral Gear Fully Armed. Fully Armed, however, was the weakest of these options as it was prone to disruption and can brick, but was a relatively useful card in several matchups outside of just True Draco due to its untargeted banishing effect. True Draco was also very prone to the set rotation lock as it forced them to waste their spell and trap destruction on their own field spell instead of on disrupting your field. The fact that this deck could pump out multiple negates, multiple different end boards depending on the situation, and also ending on a Spiral sleeper that was basically unkillable, the TCG balance looked to take this deck out back and shoot it in the face. I mean, uh, tone down its power level. This was seen in the November 2017 list, just two months after the September 2017 list was revealed, and it put Blackwing, Gofu, Spiral Gear Drone, and Quick Fix all to one, as well as fixing the consistency of the field spell lock by putting set rotation to one. The February 2018 list, however, was what I like to call a scorched earth balance, where so many cards came back and got hit that ever since the this balanced, Spiral has never seen competitive play since, and hopefully this serves as a reminder to not just the player base, but Konami as well, that Tier 0 formats need to be dealt with in a similar fashion, such as the February 2018 balance. We're currently still waiting for our first balance to 2023, and people are tired of seeing Tier Element running everywhere. Hopefully, Konami releases a balance soon, so that we can all go back to playing the game we love and continue to support despite the Tier 0 formats. And that is the story of spiral format. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, a like would be very much appreciated. I did not play a whole lot in this format. Uh, I, if I remember correctly, I was just like in between jobs and focusing on my life. And I remember like I had topped a regional, well not top, but I got my invite with Trickstar right before Zodiac got killed. And like I had my invite, so I think I really just didn't mess around with much in this format from what I recall. This format's really forgettable to me. But if you like combo heavy, super fast tier zero formats, Spiral is a fun one. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.